And when you find yourself in a position where you are more alert and activated than you would like to be, regardless of whether or not the stressor is relationship-based or it's financial or it's physical, you can look to the physiological side because it bypasses a very important feature of how we function, which is that it's very hard to control the mind with the mind, especially when we are in heightened states of activation. Fastest and most thoroughly grounded in physiology and neuroscience for calming down in a self-directed way is what's called the physiological sigh. Now, there's a tool that capitalizes on this in a kind of unique way, a kind of a twist. However, the amazing thing about this thing that we call the diaphragm, the skeletal muscle, is that it's an internal organ that you can control voluntarily, unlike your spleen or your heart or your, uh, your pancreas, where you can't just say, oh, I want to make my pancreas churn out a little more insulin right now. I'm just going to do that with my mind directly. You can't do that. You could do that by smelling a really good donut or something, but you can't just do it directly. You can move your diaphragm intentionally, right? You can do it anytime you want, and it'll run in the background if you're not thinking about it. So this incredible pathway that goes from brain to diaphragm through what's called the phrenic nerve you can control anytime you want. You can double up your inhales or triple up your inhales. You can exhale more than your inhales, whatever you want to do. It's such an incredible organ. And the physiological sigh is something that we do spontaneously, but when you're feeling stressed, you can do a double inhale. long exhale. Now, I just told you a minute ago that if you inhale more than you exhale, you're going to speed the heart rate up, which would promote more stress and activation. Now I'm telling you to do a double inhale exhale in order to calm down. And the reason is the double inhale exhale, which is the physiological sigh, takes advantage of the fact that when we do a double inhale, even if the second inhale is sneaking in just a tiny bit more air, because it's kind of hard to get two deep inhales back to back, you do big deep inhale and then another little one sneaking it in, the little sacs in your lungs, the alveoli of the lungs, your lungs aren't just two big bags, but you've got millions of little sacs throughout the, the lungs that actually make the surface area of your lungs as big as a tennis court. It's amazing if we were to just spread that out. What, those tend to collapse as we get stressed and carbon, di uh, carbon dioxide builds up in our bloodstream and that's one of the reasons we feel agitated as well. When you do the double inhale, exhale, the double inhale reinflates those little sacs of the lungs and then when you do the long exhale, that long exhale is now much more effective at ridding your body and bloodstream of carbon dioxide, which relaxes you very quickly.